All right, in this timeshare rental training video, we're going to talk about pricing your timeshare rental right, so you can charge the right amount in order to meet your income goals. And as we go through the math, I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. See if you can catch it. Hi, I'm Sue Oyuela from Timeshare Rental Strategies. We're a community of savvy timeshare owners who use rental strategies to offset the cost of our maintenance fees so we can travel better. My mission is to educate, equip, and empower timeshare owners so they can enjoy using their timeshare while it pays for itself. If that's you, then be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates. So let's dive in and talk about setting your pricing when renting your timeshare. Now, when I rent my timeshare, I do not want to compete on price with those big online travel agencies. If I try, I'll just end up losing money trying to beat their deeply discounted rates, right? So instead, I use the fixed date strategy to stack the odds in my favor of getting a booking, and I use value-based marketing to show the guests why it's worth the price I'm asking. This allows me to charge what I want to meet my income goals without worrying about what the competition is charging. But before we could talk about how much to charge the guests, we have to start by identifying your income goals. Now, the way I see it, there are two ways that my timeshare is an investment. For one, it's an investment in affordable vacations. I get value out of owning a timeshare because it reduces my expenses and makes my travel budget go farther. And because I purchased it on the secondary market for $1 and my maintenance fees are only $500 per year, I get a lot of value out of my timeshare. Because I know that I would have spent much more than $500 if I'd booked a week in a two-bedroom, two-bath resort on Expedia or one of those other online travel agencies instead, right? So it's as if I've made money by spending less on lodging than I would have if I didn't own a timeshare. And the money I'm keeping can be considered a return on my investment. Now you may or may not agree with the definition of an investment in those terms, but the other way that a timeshare is an investment that most people don't know about is that it can actually pay for itself with rental income. So if we look at a timeshare from that standpoint, then we have to have a completely different conversation that involves math. You ready? Okay. So. In the investing world, we talk about return on investment, or ROI. Basically, return on investment means if I put some money into this investment, how much am I going to get back? And the answer is calculated as a percentage. For example, if I put $10,000 into a six-month CD at my bank, they guarantee me a 5% return on my investment. So I know at the end of six months, I'll get back my $10,000 plus an additional $500 on top of that. And what's nice about the CD is that it is super safe because my principal is guaranteed. I will get all of it back. It's not exposed to market fluctuations that might cause it to go down in value like other investments such as stocks, mutual funds, real estate, corporate rentals, crypto, forex, you know, all the investments. So Risk is the other factor we have to take into consideration because investments can be risky. You can make money or lose money. And traditionally, if you have a chance to get a higher return on your investment, that usually correlates to a higher risk that you're going to lose some or all of your investment as well, right? An extreme example is gambling. Let's say you bet on red on the roulette table at the casino you have a 47.37% chance of winning or a 52.63% chance of losing. I mean, we could call it 50-50, but you know the house always stacks the odds in its favor, right? So now that you've placed your bet, they spin the wheel, and if you win, you get all of your money back plus the same amount that you invested. So it's a one-to-one -one payout. Or we can look at it as a 100% return on your investment. Fantastic. However, if it lands on black, you would immediately lose 100% of your investment. Ouch, right? I mean, that's pretty risky. Either double your money or zero. Nothing in between, right? So now, when it comes to timeshares, you are not going to believe how safe they are and how much you can actually make, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. But first, let's talk about calculating your return on investment. So the formula to calculate your return on investment is very simple. It's income 
minus expenses divided by expenses and that answer is multiplied by 100 to get your percent return on investment. Now what's cool about this formula is that there are only two variables that affect your profit, income and expenses. And that's significant because it means that we can be strategic about increasing our return on investment with our timeshare in two ways. We can either reduce our expenses or increase our income. Or if you're like me, you try to do both. Now, I work with timeshare owners across the board who own everything from points to weeks to fractionals to vacation clubs to deeded resorts and some other programs that my systems work on as well. And some owners have, you know, long since paid off the principal on their timeshare and others are still making loan payments. But the one thing we all have in common are our maintenance fees. So, for purposes of calculating our return on investment, so we keep it apples to apples, I use the amount that I've paid for the maintenance fees in the expense part of the equation. That way, when we make a profit by renting our timeshare, we can choose how we want to spend that profit, either apply it to the principal to pay off our loan faster, or once it's paid off, then put it toward the maintenance fees, and then once those are covered, use the income for anything else we want. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Now let's talk about the income side of the equation. If we go back to the original question, if I put some money into this investment, how much will I get back? And we know that when we pay our maintenance fees, they give us some time or points in return. Well, we can't spend that, right? So we need to convert the time or points into cash first so we can calculate our return on investment. And of course, we do that by renting our timeshare. So then when we collect our rental income, now we can plug that in, enter the dollar amount into the formula, and finally calculate how well our investment is doing. For example, when I pay $500 for my maintenance fees, the timeshare gives me seven nights. Okay, so I rent those nights to turn them into cash. Here's a recent booking where I rented three nights for $390 a night and I made a net profit of $1,134.90, which is after paying the 3% booking fee. Not bad, right? Okay, so let's plug the numbers into the calculator to see what my ROI is. So income minus expenses would be $1,134.90 minus $500 equals $634.90. Okay, so that's the numerator and then the expenses of $500 go into the denominator as well, which means now we divide $634.90 by $500 and then multiply that result by 100 and we get a percent return of 127% return on my investment on just one booking. Now that's incredible, right? I made enough on one booking to cover my maintenance fees and have cash left over. In fact, my net profit is more than double what I'm investing in my timeshare. All right, so that's pretty amazing. But I want to ask you, did you catch the mistake that I made? Let's go over it again. So when I invested $500 into my timeshare and they gave me seven nights to use, you'll notice that in the example, I only used three of those nights on this reservation. So to calculate my ROI, what I should have done was figure out what my expenses break down to as a nightly rate first so that I can get an accurate picture of what the return on just those nights is. This is what I refer to as my cost to control the reservation. Okay, so let's do that now. So $500 divided by seven nights is $71.43. So my cost per night is $71.43. And if I only use three of my nights, then my actual expense or cost to control the reservation was three times 71.43 or $214.29. Not 500 actually, right? Okay, so let's see what happens if we run the ROI calculation again with this accurate expense of 214.29. Starting at the top, net income of $1,134.90 minus the expenses of $214.29 equals $920.61 profit. Now if we divide the numerator of 920.61 by the expenses of 
and multiply the result by 100, we get an ROI of 430%. Right? So not only is this the actual return on investment for this reservation, it also demonstrates beautifully how drastically we can increase our ROI simply by reducing our expenses. Because you'll notice that although the expenses went down from 500 to 214.29, roughly half the cost, the ROI increased exponentially from 127% to 430% which is much more than double, right? So this is a powerful income principle, and I hope it will help you see the incredible income potential in your timeshare. And isn't it interesting that if we ignore the ROI calculation and just look at this from a pure cash perspective, I made enough profit to cover my maintenance fees, and bonus, I still have four nights left over to use for my own vacation. It just depends on what's more important to you cash profits or investment returns. So here's a challenge for you. One way to price your timeshare rental right is to shoot for at least a 100% return on every booking. That way it covers the cost to control the reservation and it gives you the same amount as a profit that you can then use to pay for your own stay at that resort. If you do, now you're not just staying for a reduced price, you're staying for free. Can you imagine living the timeshare lifestyle where you can live for free because your timeshare is generating enough income to pay for itself, plus enough to cover your own vacations as well? How long could you keep that going? Weeks? Months? Years? Let me know in the comments below if you would like to live like you're on vacation all the time. And as I mentioned earlier, the risk usually goes up when the stakes are higher right? And when you're getting returns from 25% to 600% with timeshare rentals, you would expect it to be the riskiest investment ever, right? I mean, most real estate investors would be thrilled to get an annual return of 20%. Annual return. <laughs> and for that return, they have to invest a significant amount of capital into purchasing the property, anywhere from a few thousand dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then they have to deal with all the headaches that go along with troublesome tenants and leaky toilets. And, you know, that's even if they have a management company. And it's a lot of work. And so many costly things can go wrong that their hope of a 20% profit can quickly evaporate or even turn into a loss. But with timeshare rentals, we have so little risk, it's almost embarrassing. We control the reservation with points or weeks that are worth a few hundred dollars. Then, we don't have to maintain the property. We don't have to greet the guests. We don't have to clean the room between the guests. We don't have to worry about evictions. We're not even liable if the guests do damage. They are, because they put their credit card on file when they checked in. So all that's left for us timeshare owners to do is create a free listing to attract our high paying guests and make sure they have a smooth check-in. Then the resort's gonna handle everything else from there. And then we get to keep profits of 25% to 600% on every single booking. And the beautiful thing about renting timeshares is that you can manage everything remotely if you set up your timeshare rental system the right way. So with that being said, what is your goal for your timeshare? Here's three choices. Number one, is it to break even? Just make enough to cover your maintenance fees each year. That way your timeshare is free, paying for itself. Or is it two, to make at least a 100% return on your investment by renting it? That way you're gonna double your money and you can use the profits for, fill in the blank, whatever you want. Or is it number three? Do you wanna live the timeshare lifestyle? Do you wanna travel and stay in your timeshare while the rental income covers your expenses and then some? Let me know in the comments below what your goals are. And if you'd like to talk to a timeshare rental expert about making that happen, click the link in the show notes below to schedule a free 30-minute discovery call. This is Sue Oyuela wishing you all the best and timeshare rental success. Bye for now.